So I was talking to one of our students today and he had a pretty interesting issue that I want to share here on YouTube because a lot of you are going to run into the same issue. So give this video a watch, it's going to help you. And uh, I'm also going to show you a really cool trick that you might have not known about if you stick around on this video. So basically what this guy wanted to do is he was working on the accelerator mech right here. And what he wanted to do was he wanted to take these objects right here and union them to this object right here. Basically what that means is um, he wanted to fuse them together so that way he could add a bevel to the area where they intersect, kind of like right here. Notice how it's just like two separate objects, right? There's not like a bevel kind of combining them. Now the way you want to do this is you want to use a union boolean and then bevel it. But this is going to come with a lot of issues if you don't know what to look out for. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So first thing I want to do here is just get rid of some of these random um, modifiers here. I'm just going to go and do hard ops, run a smart apply. Then I'm going to go here and run a smart apply as well. And then I can just get rid of these modifiers. Maybe I could keep the auto smooth, that's fine. And basically, we're just going to have a clean slate. We're going to have these pieces and this piece right here. I'll turn cavity on so it looks nicer. So essentially, what he wanted to do is he wanted to union these together. So we're going to shift click on both of them. And we're going to run a union boolean. And um, by the way, guys, if you're new, get our jumpstart course in the description because obviously I'm, I'm going pretty quick. I'm assuming you have Blender experience. That'll be linked below. But um, basically what you want to do is when you union these together, this is going to give you a nice fusion between these two objects. But until I apply the modifier, you're not going to actually have that, you know, access to that geometry. So what you want to do is you want to apply that union boolean, and now you're going to have access to this geometry right here. So I can basically go in and I can bevel that. Now there's a few issues with this. Now, in case you didn't know, every single Boolean requires two connection points, all right? So for example, this you know object right here is a connection point here and a connection point right here as well. Now the problem you're gonna run into is if I go in here and for example, I try to bevel this area, let me just deselect that. So basically if I go in here and I try to bevel this area, what happens when you bevel is the bevel is going to follow whatever edge is connected to it. So when I bevel this, um, by default, I'll show you how to fix it, but by default, you're going to have an overlap kind of like this, right? It's kind of following that edge, causing this overlap between here and right here. So the way to fix this is you actually go here, you apply the bevel, so just press Control B, run the bevel like that. And what you want to do is you want to turn off the loop slide feature that will basically move this edge instead of the edges on the bevel. It's kind of the first way to do it. Now, what I always recommend people to do is instead of having these nasty kind of like tangent connection points, I always recommend people have perpendicular connections. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I were to go in here and I join that, and then I can go in here, I can join these two, and then, you know, I can go down here and then join these two with the J key, and then maybe I can go here and join that one. Now what I can actually do is I can dissolve out these really nasty kind of tangent connection points here, right? And now what we have, if I just dissolve all these out, I could even connect that one to there or to here. Basically what we have now is we have a perpendicular connection. So whether or not, you know, I bevel with this turned on or off, it doesn't matter because this is going perpendicular, like perfectly 90 degrees into that bevel. So you're not going to have those weird overlaps occurring. This is how I always recommend you run your booleans. You should have these perpendicular connection points um, in a situation like this. Now. You know, imagine you have like a lot of these and you have to like try to connect everything up manually. It's going to kind of be a pain. I'm going to actually show you a cool trick that you can do beforehand to kind of automate this process. Let me show you. 
So before you actually apply this Boolean, what you could do instead, a lot of people don't know, you know, tricks like this. This is why, you know, you can really save time if you know these different tricks. Basically what I can do here is before I apply this Boolean, I could actually go to this main object, right? I could even go into wireframe. And for example, I could just add in like a vertex right there and I could join these two together. And that edge is gonna run straight through these cylinders right here. So now, when I actually apply this Boolean, it's already gonna have these edges as a connection point. And it's gonna be almost 90 degrees by default. You can kind of see what I did there, right? So now that kind of saves you time from trying to you know, solve that problem you know, with those nasty connection points. And then I can literally go in here and I'm not gonna have any sort of issues with the bevel. I can just go in and it's already kind of connected for me. The only downside here is they're not gonna to connect to the vertices perfectly, as you can see. So what you could actually do here is you could just go in, you could select you know, all these areas here, kind of like that. And then if you just go into vertex mode, I'll even deselect that one because I don't need it, and deselect that one. What I can do is I can press M and then go to merge by distance. And what that'll basically do is kind of merge them together for you naturally. Now, not all of these will be, you know, merged perfectly. And sometimes if you adjust the size, it'll merge the wrong one. So, you, you know, you want to be careful there. But um, you can still save quite a bit of time doing it that way. And then you can always just kind of, you know, re-merge those uh, edges that aren't really connected that well. But that's a quick and easy way to actually merge these vertices together. You don't have to do it manually. You can just go in, hold shift, and just kind of get those kind of merged together. So at this point, all you really need to do is go in here to each of these areas, right? So I could go in here, I could bevel that. I could go in here, and then I could bevel that. And the nice thing about bevels between unioned objects is it's going to look like it's actually connected. When you add in a bevel, it looks like it's physically fused to the object, like you'd see in real life or you know anything that looks like this, right? So that's kind of the solution to something like that. And just to kind of like really reemphasize this, I could even go to this piece, which is now a single piece, and maybe I could union it to this one. So I could basically go in, I could run a union Boolean, and then I would just go here, make sure that Boolean is applied, otherwise I can't bevel that. So now when I apply that Boolean, same thing. Like you can see here, we have these really, really shitty connection points. So it's just gonna mess up when I try to bevel it or cause overlap. So again, like I said before, what you can do to kind of hack that is you could basically go in, you could even use the knife tool and literally just go in here and just cut straight through them, just like that. Now again, this is assuming you don't need like quad topology or anything, just kind of depends what you're doing. But now if I go in here, we have a natural clean connection point. I can even just dissolve that out. And then I can go in here. I'm not gonna have any issues with the bevel and I can kind of, you know, merge those together if needed. So you could use something like machine tools to kind of clean up any of the junk. And then if you need to kind of merge these together, you can do that. But now I can kind of go in here, you know, I can bevel that. There's not a lot of room in this particular example. So you, you know, you gotta work with what you got. But by just adding in those bevels, we now have a really clean fusion on the object. And if you get any sort of shading errors like this, I have tons of videos on the channel kind of showing you why these shading errors occur. But all we really need to do here is just add in a bevel. And then we can just go into here and then add in a weighted normal modifier. And that'll kind of clean everything up. And if it's kind of, if the shading looks a bit strange, Let's see, what I'll do is I'll just, um, I'll go in here and let me just remove that mirror modifier. Then we just have this small kind of shading error right here. We need to make sure this is flat. So S, Y, and then zero. Otherwise it's gonna be kind of bent and that should fix the shading error. There's a ton of reasons why shading errors occur, guys. I mean, you can go through the channel or you can just let us help you, but there's, there's a bunch of different reasons why they occur and you need to know how to identify and fix them. In this case, just from experience, I know 
this is just not flat so you know I could flatten that out um, the issue here is that's gonna mess with the bevel so I didn't even realize this wasn't flat uh, beforehand so you would probably want to do that before you run a bevel so for example make sure this area is flat and then after that area is flat then you can kind of go in here you can run your bevels and then the uh, way to normal modifier when we add our bevel and then add our way to normal and we'll just remove that temporarily we'll kind of fix the shading issues there and then I can just kind of go in I can run a mirror modifier across uh, I guess across the y-axis so I'll just move the cursor to the world origin and there we go now we have a nice mirror there and everything's cleaned up and we have a nice bevel between the two objects so this is what frustrates a ton of people is they're working on their models and they're running into technical issues they know how to model they just don't know how to fix the technical problems that their geometry is glitching their shadings messed up their their bevels are all weird they don't know how to fix it and they end up wasting literally dozens of hours of time per project simply because they don't know what they don't know so if you guys you know run into problems like this i feel your pain i've went through it before but you need to know how to diagnose and fix these issues so if you kind of want us to help you with this if you want access to us if you want to be able to send us messages hop on a screen share and just solve your problems when you run into them I would definitely recommend checking out our Hard Surface Academy in the link in the top of the description. This is a brand new offer where you'll literally get personal direct access to us for help whenever you need it. And um, it's just going to be a very good resource to save you lots and lots of time. So that'll be linked in the top of the description below. And if you just want to do everything yourself, uh, I would recommend grabbing either our Jumpstart course if you're new to Blender or you can just head over to blenderbrews.com and take a look at some of the programs over there. So hope this video kind of helped you. Hopefully it kind of makes sense what I did there and it wasn't too technical, but hopefully everything was clear in this video. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll help you out. Thanks for watching guys. Again, all links are in the description below and I'll see you in the next video.